Guys, this is Infectious Education. So also from topic 1.1 of IB Biology, right? We'll now look at cell specialization. Now, for stem cells, basically they have two important properties, all right? So here they phrase it in a different way. Right? Let me give it to you in an easier way. Stem, stem cells retain the capacity to divide and to differentiate, okay? They're able to keep dividing, producing themselves, increasing in number, and then they can differentiate into a specialized cell. Now, there are several ways that we can classify stem cells, okay? Potipotent is the most powerful stem cell. Okay, they can form any cell type. Okay, even tissues which is not an embryo. Okay, pluripotent, similar. Okay, so basically, but this will only be embryonic, which means it's talking about after the cell was uh, fertilized as a zygote from the fertilization of the sperm and the egg. Okay, then it will become a pluripotent cell. All right. Multiprotein, they can go into closely related cell types. Let's say if a multiprotein blood cell, they can become different types of white blood cells and red blood cells, okay? And then of course we have uniprotein, they cannot differentiate, but they can self-renew. All right, so if you look at this really great diagram, so embryonic stem cells, okay, is really powerful. They are totipotent and pluripotent, okay? Fetal stem cells, okay, the stem cells we get, okay, when you're still a baby, okay, they are pluripotent and multipotent. And as we become an adult, we lose the amount of totipotent and pluripotent cells in our body. We are left with some multipotent cells, so as I mentioned, some blood cells, okay, and unipotent cells, which basically allows it to repair itself. But of course, this cannot get on or they keep on reproducing or repairing us forever. This is why we age. Now, for stem cell therapy, okay? Stem cells can be used to replace damaged cells, okay? So, of course, we have to get the stem cells from appropriate sources, maybe from the uh, bone marrow, okay? We have to give it a the correct chemical signal to allow them to differentiate, we can implant them into the patient's body, okay? And we have to suppress their immune system, which means do not allow the right blood cells to kill off the stem cells that I put into the body. And then we have to ensure that it doesn't become cancer because cancer is basically the cells cannot stop dividing. It's uncontrollable, all right? So, Let's look at some examples which you have to know for the IB. So first of all, the Stargardt disease, all right? It's basically the cells in your retina, inside your eye, they start to degenerate, okay? So we just have to replace retinal cells there, okay? Parkinson disease, death of nerve tissue. Again, now, this, they make it look easy. It's actually not because it has happening in your brain. Okay, so but the third nerve tissues are inside, okay, and there's different uh, protein compounds forming, which causes to uncontrollably again to shake our hands or right, muscle contractions. So that's the Parkinson's disease. And then leukemia, very common example. They always uh, show up in a, it's a bit cliche, but in those Korean love movies. Okay, so basically, cancer of the blood, okay. It's going to keep producing a lot of blood cells. They could produce a lot of white blood cells, but they are all ineffective in defending you against disease. So don't think that in leukemia, because the number of cells are increasing, the number of white blood cells are increasing, you're becoming more powerful to fight infection. That's not true. So we have to replace the bone marrow. Okay. So uh, how do we do it? Basically, we are going to kill off the cells in our bone marrow first. And then we take some stem cells, 
we inject it to the human's body to allow them to re-establish inside, okay? Uh, and then they will form new bone marrow cells. So in other words, they can now produce normal cells. But so of course, in paper two, in the essay questions, the session B, you could be asked ethical considerations in use of stem cells. So let's look at how different sources of stem cells could have different risks. Okay, this is the most important factor for the patient. Now, embryo stem cells, most difficult to harvest or to obtain, but, okay, remember this, highest risk of cancer, all right, of becoming a tumor. And also remember, any embryo cells that you choose to get, they're actually a potential form of life, and they are not alive yet, but they could be. So who are we? To actually stop them from becoming a real baby, all right? So of course, when we can generate embryonic stem cells, just fertilize sperm and egg together. Now, this one, some parents they will choose to put aside or collect umbilical cord blood, okay? Store it in a liquid nitrogen, okay? But uh, it's not a high growth potential a lot less risk in tumor, they can be easily obtained and stored, which is great. But of course, it is a bit expensive, all right? So, and you have to make the decision the moment your baby is born, all right? Now, adult tissue, quite low, it's quite invasive, it's really painful even under local anesthesia. Okay, but it's not that much use, all right? It's not useful in all scenarios. Of course, the embryo is the most powerful, but it, it also contains the greatest risk, all right? Now, to finish off, let's focus on forming specialized cells. Now, this process is called differentiation, okay? You have to understand this concept where all our cells in our body, besides sperm cells or our gametes, they contain the identical genome. We all have the same or they all have the same DNA inside. However, to differentiate, you will express certain genes but inhibit other ones. And we call this selective gene expression. So let's look at this diagram. One cell, this is a stem cell. All right, we activate here the red DNA it becomes red cell, okay? I activate the green DNA, I become a green cell, okay? Because I activated different genes, all right? And then the red cell and green cell, they are called specialized cell. Once a cell becomes specialized, they can never go back. They can never go back to a single cell. What's going to happen, okay, is that they are called committed. It's committed to a type of cell. This red cell can keep on reproducing, undergoing mitosis, but they cannot go back to being a single cell. So this is a really important concept. All right. So later on, when you uh, look at our course, we are going to show you how to do the questions in the IB. Okay. But note that, you know, recently, for example, some of my students in the uh, 2019 exam, they do find the uh, Paper a bit more difficult, okay? So you guys have to work hard. Now, this is an, another concept in IB. Basically, you have to know about gene packaging. Within the nuclei of eukaryotic cells, gene instructions are packaged with proteins, okay? So in eukaryotics, basically, which means cells with nucleus, okay? They are packaged with proteins together as chromatin. So this is DNA. It's DNA wrapped around proteins. Now, active genes will be loosely packed because you later on learn about transcription and translation. And we call them euchromatin. And the inactive genes will be packed really tight, called heterochromatin. Do you see on this micrograph, all right, you will see that some dark spots or dark areas. Those means really, really dense material or molecule. So basically, it would be uh, 
a condensed ball of protein with genes or DNA wrapped around them. Okay, so later on, later on we're going to talk about proteins and DNA. But look at the light gray areas, all right? Okay, follow my cursor. Okay, euchromatin are active DNA. Okay, so this is what's happening within the nucleus. Okay, active DNA, they are loosely packed, quite accessible to enzymes. That's the key, they are accessible to enzymes. Hence, we can use them for replication, transcription, translation to activate this cell because the nucleus is the brain of a cell. It's going to tell the cell what cell to become to differentiate into either gene A, using gene A to become red cell or green cell. All right. So this is a continuation of cell specialization, topic 1.1, IB biology. Okay, so thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. I hope you enjoy this.